of this world. And if he can blind our mind from obeying the truth, then children, I'm telling you, we'll end up in a ditch. Let me show you something as God is my helper. Stay with this second book of Corinthians because I'm going to come back to it. But I want you to turn with me in your Bible <coughs> now to the book. Let me find it here. Just bear with me a minute. Galatians. Galatians. Just turn right to it. Book of Galatians chapter 1. Now turn with me here and I want you to listen to Paul himself. Because there were some people of Galatia, good Christian people, that Satan was trying to pull them away from the truth after them receiving it. First of all, go to chapter 1 of the book of Galatians, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not a man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. That's the Holy Ghost. And all the brethren which are with me under the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. And he said, Amen. Now, everybody go to verse 6 in your Bible. I marvel. See, he's, he's found some people here. That you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, did he say, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him? that called you into the grace of Christ, that's Jesus, undo another gospel. See? You remove from Jesus to go to another gospel. Watch your Bible. Which is not another. See, there is none to God. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert, twist, or change the gospel of Christ. Now listen to verse 8. But though we Read it with me. But though we, the apostles, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, done, done it. Let him be accursed. Does that sound to you like if somebody's preaching you another gospel to follow them? Or did it tell you, let them be accursed? He went as far as to say, though we, or even an angel, preach any other gospel. You know what he's saying? If we even come to you with a different one than what you've got right now, and that's just in here, this good King James with these good men of God in them. If anybody comes to you, even them, with another one, you're not to receive them. That's how important this is to the Lord. Watch this. I marvel you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. See, it removes you. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. He's repeating it. If any man, any man, preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. God help us. That shows you right there, children. God will never back up another way to heaven. Jesus Christ gave his life on that cross. Listen to me. All these other movements out here from, from uh, Muslims to any other religion, Buddhisms and all these others, children, not a one of their gods died for you on that cross. Not a one. You don't even read about them giving their life. 
Jesus voluntarily laid his life down so you and me could be saved today. And in John chapter 14, he told the Jews, and it goes good for you, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. See, most people believe in some kind of a God, either the big spirit God or something. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a way or place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. See, and they told Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? What was his answer? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See? He's the only way to God. He was the Word made flesh. He even told Philip there, when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. That's your way to God. That's why he said, no man comes unto the Father but by me, because all power's in him. He's it, children. We can't go another way. It's over with. Jesus said in John 10, thank God, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. Jesus said, not me, Jesus said, the same as a thief and a robber. See? We can't just climb up any other way. It won't please God. Now, let's go back and read that right quick. You know what a door is. That's an entrance. Watch this. Book of St. John, chapter 10. Now this is the Lord revealing to His people, children, the entrance. Listen to Him. Verily, verily, verse 1, I say unto you, He that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way. They were climbing, wasn't they? But another way. The same is a thief and a robber. Because he's stealing something that wasn't right. Wasn't he is. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now Jesus is the shepherd as well as the door. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and thank God leads them out. Now a porter, that's representing the Holy Ghost. You've seen these big motels and hotels you go to, especially in the cities. When you pull up, they've got a porter there. And they'll take you right into the hotel. Jesus is our door. The porter's the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost opens to the door. See? Now watch this. Jesus said, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, come on, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, thank God, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. Why? For they know not the voice of strangers. Let me tell you something. A good Holy Ghost person, baby or older in the Lord, they're going to recognize the word. That's Jesus' voice. Watch this. This parable spoke Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. Listen to him. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not hear them. Even though they were among them, the sheep wouldn't hear them. I am the door. Could you get any plainer? By me, the door. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. When you go in that good door, Jesus, you are saved. People go around teaching you're not saved to the end. You better hope you're saved before the end. 
Now when it said he that shall endure unto the end, it didn't say would be saved. It said the same shall be saved. You'll be saved when you get there. So you see children, people's misdrewed the scriptures so much, people don't know what to believe. But here it is. I am the door. You can't beat that. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in. That means in the door and out and find pasture. What's that meaning? In the door, new birth, out into God, the joy of the blessings of the Holy Ghost, and that's your pasture. You get the gifts, the signs, the works of the Spirit, whatever God wants to give you. All right, now watch this. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come that they might have life, thank God, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Did he do it? You better believe it. But he that's in Harlan, that you paid preachers, uh-oh, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. You hear that? The harlan fleeth because he's a harlan and cares not for the sheep. Thank God Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep, thank God, am and am known of mine. Watch this now. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's his church. Here's a good one. And other sheep. Now that's not denominationisms or other religions. Other sheep is when us Gentiles were brought in. Other sheep. See, it started out with the Jews and that remnant on the day of Pentecost. Acts 10 began the Gentiles when Peter went to the house of Cornelius and all of them got buried and baptized in Jesus Christ's name. It's that simple. All right, now watch this. What did he say? Other sheep, that's Gentiles, I have which are not of this fold. Them also must I bring and they shall hear my voice and thank God there shall be one fold and one shepherd. See, Zechariah 14 spoke of that day. It said in that day that living waters, that's the Holy Ghost, would go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half toward the hinder. That's your Jew and Gentile. And the Lord will be king of all the earth in that day. So children, what the world's pushing way out here in the future, we need to obey Him now. And I'm going to tell you, buddy, you study your Bible, Acts 2.38, will give you the Holy Ghost if you'll fully obey it. Because I know how it works. Now I see my time's about up, children. Stay with me, because these are important scriptures. Another gospel can be damaging. So we thank God for you. Stay with our next program and get on our website. We've got good articles and come out and be with us. We have our church times, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 7 o'clock, and on Sundays at 1 in the afternoon. And Lord willing, if we get in good meetings, we'll let you know. So God bless you in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Thank God. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. And may God bless you.